Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulf Street today. Ron Nicolaito, along with Brian Natto. And it is a fast day, a firm day, and all weather to Peter day. And it is a beautiful day also here in South Florida. Brian, there's so much going on. Where do we start? <laughs> I think we got to start with our old buddy Sibelius and Jerry O'Dwyer uh, winning over in Dubai. How about that? That was awesome. We were going crazy in the we office. by this so, much. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Great job. Of course, Sibelius winning here, and they're going up to yep. Tampa and winning. So he's a local guy. He's a lot of fun. So congratulations to all those connections. And a little later on today at 1215, we'll be drawing the Florida Derby yep. right here. So make sure you watch it on the screens. It'll be on YouTube. So make sure you check that out. And, of course, we got 700000 dollars in the Rainbow Six Day starts in race number six with an eleven race card, seven hundred thousand gross jackpot guarantee. So lots going on yeah. this afternoon, and it's going to be just a uh, can't wait to see. Right, last I heard, there's ten in the yeah. Florida Derby. I don't know. It, we'll see how it ends up in a couple of moments. Right. Pretty and you'll have, sorry, Ron, yeah. we're going to do the draw for the Florida draw, but the entire card is going to be drawn today uh, as well, and you'll have those races out, 10 stakes next Saturday. Yeah, it'll be later in the day, but they're going to draw the you know, Florida Derby at 12.15, yep. so you can write all that down. We'll get right to the action now. First race is going to be a mile on the turf. It's made in optional claimers. Three-year-olds at that optional tag is 50,000. Uh, scratch the 13, I think the 14's out. The yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16. The jockey on the two is Ivan Pimitel Jr., and you put an early pick five ticket to get on the three ordinary three. excuse me yep so, so we're gonna, oh go ahead thirty dollars thirty dollars we late scratch two of case in race five okay so take note of that the two cases out that was a must use so he comes out so five deep here and a, a crazy opener this is gonna be a fun race and then a little more condensed <clears throat> in race two the eight little juanito in race three down inside to starship wizard in race four the five Dr. Ogeron, but I do think Golden Nugget's interesting in there. I added him in when Case came out of race five. I got a single at Nico now, who's going to be a very short number. Yeah, with Case out of there. And I actually lost two horses in okay. that race, so uh, besides that, but that horse was always my top pick. Uh, getting to the first race today, the current tepid three to one favorite, and Brian's doing the right thing by going deep yep. in this race, is Dither, who's wheeling back after responding to the addition of Blinkers with a second place finish. I think you got a, a video you want to show? Yeah, let's take a look at it because Dither ran huge last time. Here he is on the engine. He's down inside. The A horse is Lieutenant Stan pressing him to the outside. He's two to one, Lieutenant Stan run. He basically comes to a crawl. That's how, in Dither, for all the dirty work that he did early on, he gets beaten a neck. You can see Lieutenant Stan again at two to one. He's about to come out of it here. He ends up. Uh, Run, running last, by the way, and Dither just keeps on keeping on. What happens? He gets nailed, wins the battle, loses the war. Boy, this was a big effort, Ron. Yeah, he ran right to the wire. I thought he was going to win that day. I think we I, we had picked him. I think I picked him that afternoon, and I was, like, screaming oh. in the stretch. Like I do with most of the horses that get beat at the wire. You are a, a darn good rooter. <laughs> I am a good rooter. I am. A darn good. I like that. How about the seven horse in here? Super Silver Dollar is turning back after racing without blinkers and getting knocked around at the start prior to finishing fourth against those 50 maiden optional claimers. No. No? <laughs> no. You're not using them? He's just, he does, I, I, I got to see it, Ron. Maybe the blinkers, I don't know, they're coming off today. Six to five, nine to ten last time. And he can't get it done. This is a tougher group. we got to give a shout to Patrick Husbands, who's going to ride this horse. High percentage uh, jockey that's going to get going for Woodbine and has won a, a lot of races up there. Very, very talented jockey. Yeah, so he'll be riding for Mark Cassie mm -hmm. in that race. The one shockwave is making his first start since finishing third at this level and distance during, on the turf during December. So I wanted to see a stat on Sappy Joseph Jr. Layoff 61 to 180 days, roots on the turf. He's 25 for 138, 18%, 49% in the money, and almost a positive return to ref. And that's a solid numbers right there. Yeah, Safi's just so good with everything and uh that's pretty solid. And you don't necessarily think of him as a turf trainer, but uh, he does a very, very good job. I clearly just put Silver Super Dollar in the winner's circle. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt, yeah. And you're a very good rooter, too. <laughs> uh, ra race number two today. Six furlongs, claimers, four and up, $6,250. Scratch the seven Cajun mandate. And this is where Samantha has an early pick four ticket, I believe, to take a look at today. And there it is. She's got lots of coverage in the first two legs. I would like to think Samantha's going to hope she's alive after two legs, <laughs> yeah. right? And then it gets much more condensed after that. You'll see her and Claudia on at the draw for the Florida Derby. And, of course, she'll be with us and Claudia a little later on uh, throughout the day as well. Then the singles, Ron, and she's going to single. All right, Dr. Rogeron is very singable. Sing, singleable? Is that a word? I think you made it up, but okay. it sounds good. Did sound okay, right? And then, of course, that Nico now with the scratches. I had last shift on top. He's the eight that came out of the yeah. race five. And, of course, Case, as we mentioned, a little bit late on that one. Let's get back to this race. It's a little interesting to me. And I, I ended up going, Brian, with the number four, Joe DiBaggio, who goes to the Pedro Garcia barn after the claim, cuts back to what is clearly his best distance, 21 races with uh, six wins, three seconds, and already stalked the pace. He finished third, uh, going seven furlongs. The barn is 18%, very limited claims, and there's Ivan Pimentel Jr., so yep. he can win the, possibly win the early daily double. Yeah, this is a barn. You mentioned off the claim, but this is a barn that's quietly done some good work here at the championship meet. Joe DiBaggio took all the worst of it. I know he was 9-10 to 10 last time. It was a four-horse field. He just took all the worst of it, dueling down on the inside and just got totally fried. Um, he's a cool old horse, isn't he? Yep. The number eight, Little Juanito, is where you went yep. plunging to this level on the dirt after a pair of clunkers against condition claimers sprinting on the grass. You know, Bobby Hess pulled this move off yesterday with uh, uh, Pierce Spite got the W. Well, here's a dropper, Little Juanito, on the outside. Uh, you got to dig a little bit to find the dirt form, but he's got some decent dirt form, and I just think this drop has got to play run. The number two commanding general drop it to the 6,250 level after stepping off the claim by Kent Sweezy. Showed speed and faded against 10 claimers going five and a half. Six-time winner on a fast main track. I think he responds favorably to the switch today. Yeah, I, I agree. Getting back to the main track. I, I, I think we've got the winner in there. We've got the order mixed up a little bit. Yeah. But I think we're supposed to get through with these, these horses here. Go to race number three today, and it is going to be a mile 70 about distance on it to Peter. Claim is three and up, non-winners of two in life. A full field of 12 going long on it Peter. If you want a head scratcher, you got <laughs> one right here, pal. And you did go with Starship Wizards dropping to this level. Yeah, we go down inside. Now, you, you know, w w where did that race come from last time? I get it. I mean, he might bounce such a better race than he's really ever run. But it was also the first time for Jose Garofalo, and, and we'll see if we can double up. I like the post. And there are a few others in here, Ron, that are a little tough to trust as well, you know? I went to the outside with the number, well, not all the way, almost right. to the outside with uh, Cibere, who moves to the Jose D'Angelo Bon after the claim, cuts back to the mile 70, broke slowly from the rail prior to finishing third against this level, going eight and a half furlongs. So I found the stat on Jose D'Angelo. First after the claim, and they narrowed it down over the last couple of years just on the Tapita. He's 12 for 47, 26%, 62% in the money with a 164 return of investment. And 164 is actually an okay return of investment. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jose doing what Jose does. He's a very, very high percentage trainer, pretty much doing everything right. I just, the post is the only reason why I didn't put this horse on top. I think it's a little better post for Starship Wizard. That's all. But I'm not playing a horizontal sequence without the 11 C Beret on and, here. Sorry, Brian. The other horse you used, Bach, is hoping to finally notch the elusive second lifetime victory after back-to-back -back second place finishes. But this horse is one for 26. And uh, finished second, you know, uh, He'll be there somewhere on my ticket. Yeah, there's a reason Ron put him in second, and I put him in fourth because uh, he's not too interested in uh, getting the picture taken out there. Two stakes races this this today. Well, I'm thinking today. this week today actually, and one of them comes up right here in the fourth race. Five furlongs on the turf, three year olds, a hundred thousand dollars. The Texas glitter, no scratches, jockey changes. Uh, looks like everybody's picking the five. Doctor Osoran. Yeah, you know he he seems to be. Hey, he might be the best horse anyway, and he seems to get all the best of it in here because uh, he he did well to draw outside Crispy Cat, and he was so good. Doctor Osoran winning last time was a pretty solid group for the level two winners. Come you know the second and third come back to win and he drilled them last time so um he's kind of I, I like to say the house horse you know he, they got to get to that race yeah we'll see yeah you know be that those next out winners rock and ro rock and rock and roller and ship the goods so christoph come on jose ortiz named to ride i, I want to hear about golden yeah. nugget 
Oh, Golden. Well, here's the thing. Okay, there's so much speed in this race in Crispy Cat. We're going to show you a replay of him in a second. Now, he ran huge in his U.S. debut for Jorge Delgado. But you got Paco on Crispy Cat. You got all the speed with Dr. Rozier onto his outside. Maybe something's got to give a little bit, Ron. And maybe Golden Nugget picks up the pieces. I don't think he, I don't know if he can beat a Dr. Rozier on, but he's got the right running style to lay back just a little bit, just a bit, and maybe if one of the horses tires. I want to see this uh, video of Crispy yeah. Cat. Not a lot going on here, but this horse ran huge, Ron. This is, don't forget now, his U.S. debut. Cruising Man, 25 to 1, down on the inside. And Cruising Man is going to come back out of it uh, a little bit. Uh, he, he runs third, but, you know, Crispy Cat's always got him measured, Ron. And Ship the Goods just tripped out beautifully. He's an experienced yeah. horse that had a run in the U.S., unlike Crispy Cat. And Crispy Cat fires him tooth and nail to the wire. Monster U.S. debut for Jorge Delgado. 15 days rest, though, buddy. That's yeah. a quick turnaround. You know, and Ship the Goods is one of the horses that Dr. Osaran beat in its neck, you know, when he came out and won. So, uh, you know, here's the thing with Crispy Cat. I don't read too much into this because this horse ran exceptionally yeah. well. But Jorge Delgado, with sprinters on the turf, all levels, over the last two years, he's 3 for 19, 16%, 53% in money, 58% sense of the return investment that you don't have to look at but this is not his game that's the point i was trying to make even though this horse ran exceptionally well and i got him right on my ticket no i agree and that's why we show stats like that that just, just jorge delgado is so high percentage with everything he does sometimes you try to look to beat barns like that where there maybe aren't the strongest and something like that kind of points that out a little bit i want to talk about the number six gordy and not as an interesting pa bread who, who debuts in the turf he had a really solid sprint campaign against state bred uh pencil Pennsylvania up, up there, in, you know, for Guadalupe yeah. Preciado. What do we get today? Luca Panici in the saddle. He knows how to win. Just they got to prove he can do it on the turf and against open company. Yeah, there's a lot to ask from this horse. Now, the fact he's here is his confident move. He's going to ship down. The other thing I want to know, too, he's got to win on the Tapita at Presque Isle Downs. It's not the end-all, be-all, but we'd like to think if you can handle the Tapita, you can handle the turf course. He needs a real meltdown, though, because he doesn't have any early speed either. Yeah, you know, owned and trained by, uh, you know, a friends of mine, Joe NBC, and uh, they take shots, the point I'm All trying right. to work there. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, race number five is, no, race number six is where the Rainbow Six starts. So this race here, five and a half furlongs, made in special weight, three-year-olds. And like we said, we had a couple of scratches in there. The late one of the two case, late meaning we got it just before we came on the air. Also the scratch, Bernardo's Legacy to six and the eight, last shift. One of the horses I did have on my ticket, but all along I had the three. At Nico on top of my ticket. I scratched into him. I liked last shift. We'll talk about him another time, hopefully, for Antonio. But, yeah, this is – and Nico was the horse to beat anyway. Don't get me wrong. And now he's uh, – unless they bet one of the firsters, and we'll talk about him in a second here. At Nico, is, he's going to be – He's going to be one to five in here, Ron. They bet him on debut. He was six to five for Jorge Delgado on debut. He runs huge. He runs a good second, good magic. Ran, I think, an 87 that day. Uh, they're going to have trouble beating this horse. Yeah, and we did the same thing with the second and third one. You know, started on a high note first time. Started for Safi with Patrick Husbands and the four. Yep. Uh, you know, just uh, for uh, George Weaver. Uh, it looks like it's the three horses race to lose. Uh, we've seen that happen a couple of times over the thing. So if you've got a different plan in here, I know about the first time starters, make sure you use it. Now we'll take that short little break, and we'll be back with my Rainbow Six ticket. on my, I don't know how I.
welcome back. About 11.50 a.m. No, exactly 11.50 a.m. And uh, if you didn't hear us earlier when we came on, we'll be joined for the Florida Derby at 12.15. And we still got a lot to talk about here, so we'll get right to it. The Rainbow Six is going to start right here in race number six, a mile and the 16th on the turf, allowance optional claimer. And here's my ticket this afternoon. I stepped it up a little bit, $48.60. I had it yesterday for a whopping 78 bucks, so I was able to throw that money hey, back in here. I got it. You don't poo-poo it. I mean, you hit it. it <laughs> And you hit it and uh, on, a, on a marginal small ticket, so congratulations. Uh, I, I'm going to we'll talk about this race. I'm signed because of Jimmy Toner. I can't seem to catch him. I'm hoping I can get him today. Got some coverage in race number seven with Marissa's mission. Also, he's the outside horse, Bryce Canyon. Going to rate, race eight, the number seven horse, Wonker, is my long shot today. I don't know what I'm going to get. I think he was six to eight to one in the morning line. I, I think maybe I can get a little bit of a shot in there. You, you like Wonka. Yeah. He's been I, good to you, yeah, been good to me, so I'm going to go back. In the ninth race, Tone Field, and of course, one of our favorite horses, Danville, High Yield Kitten. And then in the Melody of Colors, Sassy Nature, Bedtime Story, and the 10 Sure Can. Lost a horse I really liked in there. Now, I always had Sassy Nature on top, but I lost the seven. And the last got some coverage. My top pick is Nate the Great. So seven uh, $48.60 for me. Getting to this race. Like you saw, I singled the one siege of Boston. He's going back to the turf after highlighting his versatility. He returned from the layoff, and he ran a really solid third against this level of competition. The race moved from turf to torpedo. Of course, I bet him to win that day. Jimmy Toner, what a great meet he's having. Is this your best bet? Um, yeah, that's my best bet. Idea. Oh, you got it. Don't tell me it's your best bet. Yeah. Oh. And uh, we're going to get about eight to five on this yeah. horse. He's not going to be remotely close to four to one. He'll be a strong favorite in here. He should be because, you know, you look at the turf form in New York. He's well drawn inside. He was better than Jimmy Toner. Jimmy Toner's been the best. And Jorge Ruiz is just having a great meet here. And it's the son of Warfront. Well, that's it. That's it for me. You went to the outside with Red Hornet in second. Yeah, we'll talk about it as it gets closer, but this is a great spot to take a horse that's going to be a heavy favorite. You can single and get more value like Ronnie's doing, spreading later. Red Hornet, okay, it was a horse had a real trip two back. He went too far last time. On the cutback today, I think he's interesting. I just, this post is a little problematic, and I just think, like, my partner, C.J. Boston's a real horse, but I like Red Hornet. Don't sleep on him underneath. You know, he's got speed and got Julian. We've mm -hmm. seen this numerous times over the years that Julian gets, if he can sleep along on the front end, he can be very dangerous. I went to the two, Aruba in second, who's 8-1 to one on the morning line. He's making his local turf debut the first start since defeating maiden special weight runners, going to minor and 16th up in Tampa. Jorge Abreu is pretty sharp, winning consecutive races. He's gotten Jose Ortiz atop this gelded son of Kitten's Joy. I think this horse is going to take money in my estimation. He, he's going to get the acid test today because you saw him, you know, kind of in the bigger leagues in New York, couldn't get it done, and then he goes over to Tampa and he beats up on softer at a short price. Uh, this is a significant class rise to him, but he's well drawn. We're a real good turf trainer, too. Yeah, you know, just other ways. I use glider in third. You use it in fourth. You use yep. the seven inflation adjusted. But uh, we're going to have to hang our hand on CJ yeah. Boston in race number six. Let's go to race number seven today. It's a mild. 70 on is about distance on the Tapita claim is four and up uh, $10,000 scratch to five telephone talker and the also 13 ghost in you and Samantha put a late pick five ticket and we'll take a look at that right now and see oh she did the reverse pyramid again today she's got we'll talk about this seven she's got some good coverage yeah she does and you can see the single is in the finale and that's Stanley House she's coming back to Stanley House that's interesting that's the horse they oh, bet yeah. strongly last time boy I'll tell you what the, the maiden special way to get out of this card on the tapita that is a doozy my friend yeah and that Stanley House got beat by Nate the Great but mm -hmm. come back that doesn't mean anything this time around we'll see how they match up in that final race getting back to this race Brian and I did go, and I'll start it off with the number eight, Marissa's Mission, who's facing 10 open claimers on the all-weather to Peter after stalking the pace throughout, finishing fourth. That was 20 state-bred optional claimers going a mile in the turf. Marty Drexler, he's good with the surface switch. You got Hall of Famer Javier Castellano, three-time winner 
on Tapita's surface. That doesn't mean just here. No, but two of them are here. Yeah. So I, I, I definitely have you on, on mm. this horse. A major, major player. Marty has turned the corner in the last, it's probably a couple months now. Yeah. He's really been going strong as he usually does. And this horse is a definite threat. Got the right running style too to route on the Tapita. You want to be close, not too close. Stalking gear. Yeah, and you got Cash Call Kitten for a nice price of six to one with the apprentice Angel Morales. Yeah, so you got to dig a little bit or you got to just kind of forget some races. And the races you forget, draw a line through, are the turf races. So just focus on the Tapita races here. Okay, he hasn't won here. I get that. He's 0 for 4, a second in three thirds. And all of those races stack up nicely figure wise with who he's facing today. The number 12, Bryce Canyon, will depart from the outside today. Watch well, you got that one scratch yep. inside now. Uh, you know, after setting the pace and finishing third behind a, a torpedo specialist, fly the W. That was a 20 starter optional claimer. Jimmy Tona, Jorge Ruiz, overseeing that outside mm -hmm. draw today. Ooh, I almost put this, if this 12 wasn't 12, uh, he'd be on top. Oh, well, you can see it there. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you 100%, Ron, because this is a, this post is tricky with this horse. But, boy, with that being said, it's Jimmy Toner again, Jorge Ruiz as well. You put them together, they're about 25% here. And this horse has been in such good form. He got the layoff race behind him, the two races since. I mean, that last race, if he gets back to it, because you fly the W, is absolutely streaking right now in the Tapita. The number six, Dazzling Truth, I want to mention this horse, is turning back slightly. You look at that last race. He stalked throughout, and he finished second at this level edition, going a mile in the 16th, trainer Frank Russo, and you're getting Chantal Sutherland. Chantal's had a couple of nice victories over the last few days. She's stringing uh, wins together. Super Chow, really good ride on, on him in the stakes uh, la last Saturday, I believe, and your buddy Frank Russo quietly with the you know, stakes win with Belgrano, but he's done some good things otherwise at the championship meet, too. Yeah, and do we say it like we always say? Hey, this tries. There's yep. supers in these races. That's what you want to do, and uh, use horses like that. Uh, race number uh, eight this afternoon is one mile on the turf and allowance optional claim of Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and up. That optional tag, 62,500. Scratch the 11, journey to the moon. And you got your late pick four ticket here. And interesting to see it. You did not use Wonka. Nope. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we're go we're going to have, we're gonna have a little discussion away. later in the office. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I'm going to need to see you later, Brian. <laughs> uh, the single, there you see Danville. I, I just got to side with him. Right. He looks better in that spot. 53 in the other stakes, the Melody of Colors. Boy, was Sassy Nature good for Jack Sisters? And we'll yeah. show you how good. Long shot, Ron, in the finale. Oh, You're ooh. the Nicoletti special here, the finale long shot. Simcoe is Simcoe. on top for me at wow. 20. We got to look at that. Yeah, all right. $8. You can't get away with that. You can get it twice. You so that, let's go to this race, a mile on the turf, allowance optional claimer, as I mentioned, scratch the 11. I'll start it off with my long shot in here, Wonka, who's stretching out to the mile again after following that optional claiming victory at that distance. Now he bobbles at the start. He finishes third. It's against this level. Uh, going seven and a half furlongs, Bill Mott, Miguel Vasquez, a dollar, daughter of uh, twirling candy, excuse me, and I just think this horse has got some upside, and I want to get a little bit of a price. Yeah, I think you, she was either your long shot. I know you picked her yeah. last time, and I, I remember saying to you, we were watching in the office, like, you're loaded for bear here. Yeah. And I didn't think she saw it out. And Maybe she regressed a little bit because the return was really good, or the, the the bounce back, I should say, two back. Maybe you paid the price for it last time. She, she's in the mix here. I got her in third, but I, to me, there's a separator between the top two and Wonka. What about the horse you have on top, Ariana? The German bread is making a North American debut for Chad Brown. You know, I, I don't have any info on this horse or anything. I, I, I just didn't think, Ron, this was the toughest group that we've seen here uh, in an optional 2K, 2X k two x at the championship meet. She's adding Lasix. It's Chad. It's Peter Brandt. Good form over in Germany. Consistent form over in Germany. I would think she can run a little bit. You got the stat? I got a stat here. Uh, Chad Brown with foreign shippers on the turf into Gulfstream. He's one for 16, 6%. 50% of the money, 35 cents is the return of investment over the past five years. So it looks like to me it gives him a race. That's the way I, I read the stat. I got it. You were stat boy today. <laughs> and when I saw this, putting this uh, together, uh, I was very surprised at that. Mm -hmm. And that is a legitimate stat, a really prolific barn, right. one for 16. Yeah, maybe they just, you know, start some here yeah. and then for 
later on down the road. Uh, I also used the number two free data, who's sitting on a winning performance, I believe, after returning from the laugh. He finished second at this level and distance for training Tom Proctor. Paco Lopez starting to win races again. He yep. got a good win yesterday. And this is a war front mass, so you knew I was going to give yep. it a second look. No, Ron makes a good point with Paco, too. You know, jockeys, they go in and out of form or slumps or what have you. Paco seems to be pretty in tune the last three or four racing days, and free data's in the mix. Miss Delicious is the one I want to talk about yeah. quickly. The race two back. White Frost is going to win graded stakes races this year for Bill Mott. Wouldn't shock me if she wins a grade one stakes race yeah. for Bill Mott this year. We draw a line through the Honey Fox last time. That's not Miss Delicious. She's with some friends today. If Arena needs this race, if the stat that Ronnie showed you mm. plays out, she's a threat in here. Yeah, she's she was on a tear there yeah. before she, you know, they stepped in. You have, you can't not trying to honey fox right. coming in with that good form in there so we'll see how it plays out now with that stat i also used this horse on the ticket yeah. and used it you know on my rainbow six it's not i mean, you know stats are just something sometimes to read if the horse is good it's going to win no matter what the, you got an excellent trainer like chad brown so race number nine today is a mild starter optional claim of four-year-olds and up starter for eight or less or the optional tag of 16 scratch the outside horse the north remembers seems this horse gets entered a lot <laughs> for Fred Le bow in there seems that way at least hey take it away with danville isn't he just the best horse uh, yeah, i don't know he's going to be a short price i get it he's three for six though uh on the gulfstream park main track I, I just think his races of late have been better than these he's, he, he just absolutely walloped the field at this level two back at this trip and anyone else in here i find i found a little bit tough to trust although tone feeling boy I, I'm going to throw it to you on Tone Field. He mm. ran so hard last time, Ron. Well, what I like, he's changing barns today. He's mm -hmm. going to Jorcino Bond. But what I like, he turns back to his best distance. He's had 22 races at this distance. Five wins, five seconds, two-thirds. After notching his second consecutive re victory in defeating competition. So he's turning back to the mile. I, I think that's going to help him this afternoon. There's Paco Lopez once again. So we'll see how this horse runs today. Yeah, I mean, he. I just wonder if he comes back a little bit. He basically dueled for a mile last, mile in his 16th, and he gutted it out to his credit. Boy, what a cool old, old, old warrior he is, Ron. I wanted to mention the number 10, too, in here, High Yield Kitten, who's stretching out to the mile after a couple of solid performances at seven furlongs. He defeated those condition claimers two starts back, was second against open competition last time out. Matt Williams, Javier Castellano at a distance today, but I, I just like those two races at, at seven-eighths of a mile. Yeah, Matt Williams has done a good job with this horse as well. He's not out of the realm of possibility. He's got to improve a little bit, but he did draw well for his style with that long run into the first First turn, he can kind of spy it accordingly to his left. And what did you see with Hay Porter? Well, something underneath, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. I, I thought the gap was, was pretty big. But we mm -hmm. go off the claim for Carlos Perez, who's very quietly. I, we talked about a barn earlier, but this is a barn that has done really nothing wrong and put all his horses in good spots at the championship meet. We're going to flip the page and go to our co-feature event of the afternoon. It's the 10th race. It's five furlongs on the turf fillies. It is the $100,000 Melody of Colors. Scratch the 247. Note the jockey on the number 11 is Lionel Reyes. And number 13, Primrose Ridge, will get in. And that's where Chantal will yep. be riding. So, uh, a Sassy Nature was good. And you want to show it. Well, we're going to show you how good, okay? Because Sassy Nature is the five. Vibella is the eight. Thank you. Bob, good stuff. Here's sure can. Boy, is she tripping out. No. Finishing order is 9, 8, 10. Okay, so look where Sassy Nature is. She's dueling on the lead. The one horse that was up front early, too, already backing out of it. They end up running sixth in last. Calif uh, Sassy Nature with her California speed. Ron, she just absolutely bottoms out this field. I mean, she Jack Sisterson told me if they're running, if they're in front of her, they're going too fast. And sure as heck, they were going too fast. I thought this was a dominant, devastating win. Uh, Joel Rosario, Julian's going to ride today. Joel Rosario has really basically never really asked her for much of anything, Ron. She's an exciting horse. Yeah, she really won, won impressively in that race. Uh, we both, I believe, used the number three in here, Bedtime Story, who's making her turf debut after an undefeated three-race campaign sprinting on the torpedo for Jose D'Angelo. He worked her a couple of times on the Palmetto's turf in preparation for the surface switch. So I like that. Javier Castellano in the saddle. I'm glad you brought that up. Now, Jose's 0 for 25 first turf. That's impossible, but it's true. But the works, you're right, Ron. And I really look at the one back in uh, late, uh, back uh, at Palmetto's where she went 59. 
that's a serious move. And I heard Jose talking to our buddy Ed Gray in the office. He said, no, I think she's going to be just fine. I like that work quite a bit. So maybe the same thing could happen that you just saw in the replay. Maybe Sachi, Sassy Nature bottoms out all the other speed. Maybe Bedtime Story, who, by the way, is three for three and can run, you know? Yeah, what did you see with Miami Girl, the Irish bred that Leonel Race is going to ride there? Well, at the time, okay, the 13 was not in. And, right. you know, Chantel rides a lot, you know, first call a lot for Jorge Delgado. She opts for the 13. I, I, I think that's, you know, something we've got to mention, right? right. Now, Leonel's going to get on Miami, girl. I just thought, you know, she should have a little class coming over. Both horses are owned by yeah. AMO, AMO, AMO. Or AMO Racing, so d d certainly a move that you want to look at. Yeah. Sure can. I think you grab a ship from Brian Lynch. You saw him in that last video you just showed there, and he ran okay in there. And then Flor de Sombra is an interesting uh, PA bred, right? In there, number eight, is that the one? No, Flor de Sombra. Uh, no, no, that was the other race. No, so that's, that's, that's it. it. No, that's, that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this one... Same situation comes in, races up there in Pennsylvania. You know, Dome's the same as the other horse. He's literally there. bringing the same exact horse in for yeah, two different yeah, races. It's, that's what I, was, I thought I'd throw it down, Rome, but you're absolutely right. So, you know, Guadalupe, Guadalupe Preciano, I, I just think that, you know what? You don't know what you're going to get with these horses. That's the best day way of saying it. We're kidding a little bit, right. but Guadalupe has won a lot of races, and he knows what he's doing. These horses are not down here to hit the beach on uh, Hollywood uh, Beach. So that it lands intrigue into the stakes race, sort of like the other stakes race. So you're getting it twice here with these yeah. PA breads. And the final race on the card, it's a mile and a 16th on the Tapita. It's made in special weight, three-year-olds, and uh, there is no scratches or jockey changes in here. Brian, you went with the number five, Bellamy. No, I got the eight. So no, I, it might be a typo on me. Uh -uh. Simcoe is my long shot oh, today. That's okay. It. So Simcoe is my long shot. Canadian bread. Simcoe, you ever, you know, the Revolutionary War and any of that? You get into uh, that? No. You, you and um, Guillermo. Guillermo read no. those books. All now. right. So, anyway, John Simcoe. Anywho, this horse is interesting to me, Ron. He gets the tightener on the dirt for uh, Katarina Vazilueva, who now blinkers. <laughs> I know you like to say that. I know you like to say it. Blinkers in Lasix, the stretch out as well. There's some good heavy hitters in here, but this is also an all-weather Tapita Barn that does a very good job up at Woodbine. I think it's interesting, this horse. I like a horse like this when you're getting 21. Right. You know, that's what you want to do in here. You know, Nate the Great is who I went with, and Nate the Great has been knocking on the door in consecutive races going along in the Tapita. Including his last, he went up, he set the pace, but he got nipped at the wire when finishing second in front of a pair of next out winners. Safi Joseph, Patrick Husbands, son of West Coast, I'm not totally sold on him, but I think he's the best horse as far as the, the last two races go. Yeah, this is the replay that just missed the cut because this, <laughs> horse ran, this horse ran big last time. He basically bottomed out all the other speed, and same thing we showed earlier. He won the battle, lost the war, just got nailed on the wire. Well, the number five horse in Bellamy, we'll start with this one again. It's coming back to mileage 16th under Peter. Rallied, uh, you know, uh, rallied wide to finish third, was beating the neck against, uh, you know, maiden special weight runners going nine furlongs for Christophe Clement. He's pretty good with horses going turf to the all-weather surfaces, and Julian Leperu managing the surface switch. Yeah, my only concern, Ron, and, and certainly I use this horse in my late pick four, I don't know how strong that baby Billy race was. This horse was 20 to 1, didn't really do a lot of running on debut at Tampa. The baby Billy was his first time turf. He ran well to his credit. Chantel was aboard that day. I'm leery of that race. What did you see? With Samantha single in here, I mean, I used it a little further down. We both used it in the third. Stanley House, who's stretching out to the mile in the 16th today. I'm not going to speak for her, but I think what she's thinking, because we talk about this a lot, this was a woodbine horse that needed a Gulfstream race. Okay? Yeah, and that's proved to come true a lot. Yes. So yeah. that is it for our 11 race card. Uh, no lightning round today because we got lots of good stuff coming on uh, a little later on, and mostly yes. the draw of the Florida Derby at 12:15 p.m. So everybody's got to go change positions, get ready for the draw. Of course, Brian and I, Samantha and Claudia will be here throughout the afternoon. Uh, but the day is certainly not complete without Pete Aiello giving you the scratches, the scratches, the, the scratches, stretches, changes, and his great. Call. 
calls throughout the afternoon. Without a doubt. And again, you know, the draw for the Florida Derby is coming up. But don't forget, by the end of the day, we'll have the entire card drawn. Those PPs will come out tonight. Ten stakes on that power card. The Oaks is on there as well. Darth Vader coming back. And uh, a lot of excitement. Yeah, you know, it started the day off fantastic with Sebelius winning for us to buy. Our buddy Larry Combe was calling the races there. And uh, so great for Jerry O'Dwyer. That really set the tone today. Jerry is, uh, you know, a guy we root for a lot ar around here and is down here now in South Florida for, for, for the majority of his, his season. And just one of the good guys that you always root for. And he has done a phenomenal job with Sibelius. Uh, There's no other way to put it. Yeah, it was great. I remember I, I got him the first time at yes. 7 to 1 or something like that. And uh, he came over and said, you finally picked one of my horses. And I said, well, this, uh, how could you not pick this horse? Boy, was I onto something back then. So Great to see. Yep. Great to see. So we'll see you in a little while. And don't forget that draw coming up in five minutes. So we'll see you then. Introducing the first racing tool from Pegasus to Preakness. Iconic venues. World class racing. Millions at stake. New champions will be crowned. Only at first.